Hey everybody, Adam Wilber here with Volpine Creations, and I have my good friend and incredible magician, Michael O'Brien, joining today's call. Basically, we're just going to be interviewing and talking a little bit about the classic cups and balls and um, his take on the updated coffee beans and coffee cups. So without further ado, I'm going to let Michael tell you a little bit about his history and magic, what he's currently doing, which I think is one of the best ways to become a truly good entertainer is what his current role is. So I'll let him talk to you about that. Without further ado, I'm going to add him on. And there we go. Michael, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really stoked about this. Um, I'm really stoked to be sitting down here doing this interview with you. If you asked me like 10 years ago, would I be doing this? Be like, oh, no way, dude. I wish I could grow up to be just like Adam, you know, <laughs> like he's killing it right now. And so <laughs> well, thank you this very is awesome, much. man. I really appreciate thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. So um, just Can a little tell... bit about me. I'll try I, not yeah, to I wanna say too much. I want to say real quick just to people, um, tell them where you work currently. And to me, it is the best master class on becoming a real entertainer because you get every walk of life you're not a corporate guy, a kid's show thing. It's literally, you have to be able to entertain and not only entertain, but sell every walk of life. So wh where are you currently working? Yeah, so right now I'm a pitch guy at the uh, Main Street Magic Shop at Disneyland, the Anaheim and California Disneyland Park. And my job essentially is to perform and demonstrate the product that we sell in the shop. And not only just perform it, but I also am a salesperson as well, so I have to I have to do a pitch. I have to get people interested in buying it. So the interesting thing about it is that you learn how to talk to people, but you really learn how to sell too, which I think for anyone that wants to be like a working professional magician, I know not all of us want to be professionals, but for those of us who do, it's not just enough sometimes to let the magic speak for itself. Sometimes you really have to explain to your client, you know, this is why I am the best for your event. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So absolutely, uh, yeah. Trial by fire for sure for a lot of this. <laughs> kind of got thrown in um, to the magic uh, to the magic world. My first gig was working at a magic shop. So amazing. I, I think honestly there is just no. I did it for five years in New Orleans at Magic Masters on the Riverwalk Mall, and honestly I still think to this day that's the that's the the best training I ever had, um, and and it was just fun, man. Mm -hmm. So. Anyone who, who asks, how do you get good or how do you become a professional, find a dope magic shop. Something like Disney is a dream come true because there's traffic all day, every day. And just spend three or four years there. And if you leave there after four years, not a good magician, then maybe, I don't know, there's, um, you know, people, they collect Pokemon cards is a cool hobby. Um, <laughs> their stamps, you know, yeah. but maybe <laughs> and then my children too. So awesome. Well, hey, man, I, I appreciate I know you've got uh, a little bit of time to, to spend here with us today. And really, we want to just be talking about um, the coffee cups and beans. So so kind of first and foremost, your take on the cups and balls in general, um, you know, is it something that you have performed? And when I say cups and balls, it can be cups and balls or, of course, the chop cup. I do understand their different routines. <laughs> But we're talking essentially about a cup and a ball and the entertainment value that can pack into that. So um, is this something you've performed for a long time? Uh, are you new to it? And, and sort of what are your feelings in general about the, the cups and balls? I absolutely love the cups and balls. Um, it's one of those routines that I feel every magician should at least dip their toe into learning some version of the cups and balls, whether it be a, a one cup routine, a two cup routine, a three cup routine, whether it be with the small little cups and the small little balls or like the giant wide load ones like Gazo does like on the street and stuff like this. Um, getting interested in the cups and balls and trying it out. I mean, it's not for everybody. Not everyone's gonna enjoy it, but just trying it out and seeing if you like it because it teaches you a lot. It teaches you misdirection, teaches you sleight of hand, teaches you performance chops. You have to be able to perform this thing without looking down because people don't wanna be looking at the top of your head, right? You have to be able to engage the audience and, and be performing like this. So I think Cups and Balls is great. My introduction to the Cups and Balls was the Michael Amar Cups and Balls routine. Uh, I saw that, shoot, I don't even know how long ago this was now. And that was my favorite version of the Cups and Balls until I discovered Ricky Jay's history lesson. If you haven't seen Ricky Jay's history lesson, 
oh my goodness, this takes the cups and balls to the next level even further because he's not just doing a cups and balls routine. He's telling a whole story and he uses bowls and, and cups and and uh, different items and things and the balls are all jumping all over the place and stuff. So Ricky's J's, Ricky J's routine was a favorite of mine for a while. Now, I'm primarily a walk around, restaurant, table hopping, strolling, cocktail party uh, type performer. So the cups and balls is something that I took out of my act because you can't really do that while you're walking around with no table, right? So at one of our magic meetup groups, which Adam, I'm, I'm pretty sure you got a chance to, to visit us at one point, right at the Monday Night Jams in Orange County. Did you get to do that at all? One time, yeah, it was great. I had a great time there, yep. Yeah, so uh, we have this magic meetup group. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we're not meeting right now, but for a while, like 30, 40 magicians would pack into this restaurant. They would give us like the bonus room in the back and we'd jam in session. Well, one of my good friends, uh, Gregory St. Pierre, uh, he was working with me on a new chop cup idea that I was trying out. And he said, well, you could do that in the, cause I wanted to do a strolling version of it. He said, you can do this in the spectator's hands. Uh, so we worked out a way to do that. Now, after the fact, I discovered that Scott Alexander did something similar. My approach, Greg's approach is a little bit different, but essentially I'll give Scott credit for, uh, for the move. Cause it's really cool. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, essentially the idea is to do the chop cup while the spectator is holding the cup in their hands it seems very fair and uh the cool thing is, is they freak out man like they they i've had people tell me like holy crap i felt the ball go through my hand because they feel it in the back of their hand and then they feel it on their palm of their hand and it's well like i remember i saw you at blackpool um, and we chatted a bit and i, I kind of showed you the project and then you were like oh well i have this and you did that move to me and i was like Yo, Felix, <laughs> give, give him a set. I want him. And that, I mean, that's the whole reason, you know, so for anyone who doesn't know, Michael is on the, the coffee cups and beans with his routine and tutorial. And what he's talking about here is taught on there. And it really is, a, it's an interesting feeling. It's a really strange feeling. And now, obviously, it's going to be a different feeling for a professional magician than a layman. But even for me, someone who's done cups and balls for over 20 years, it was a weird, cool feeling. Um, yeah, I mean, I, we won't give too much away because you'll see it on the on the on the uh, the teaching and whatnot. But it is a unique and different way of, you know, we always say make it happen in their hands. Um, a lot of times we mean put a double lift in their hand and it changes. But this is genuinely happening in their hand in real time. Besides maybe one or two mm -hmm. points across where you're covering their hands, I, I've yet to feel anything like that. So it's a really really cool moment. Yeah, I'm glad you like it, man. It's the whole routine is designed to be progressive. So uh, when I say that, what I mean is like it starts kind of small and it, it builds and builds and builds, right? Uh, just like a normal cups and balls routine would culminating with like a final load and everything like that. But the one thing that I really, really appreciate about coffee bean cups and balls is the final loading sequence is it's crafted in such a way i i never thought that i would be doing any kind of liquid or or um the, like the like the flash like the flash loads that you do you guys have seen the trailer you know what i'm talking about where you lift the cups and all these like coffee beans or sometimes you'll see magicians do it with coins or whatever and they'll go like all over the place i never thought that that would be something that i'd be able to really do without putting hours and hours of practice into it and then i saw you pitching this at blackpool and i was like Dude, I, this is this is insane. Like, um, people need to get this because this this really makes it, you know, this really makes it so easy to do. And, and you can you can customize it a little bit if it doesn't suit your personality to do it a certain way. You can kind of change it up a little bit. But everyone is familiar with coffee cups. Everyone loves coffee, you know, for the most part. <laughs> um, but you know, there's like a lot of really cool things you can do with it. And I tried to kind of turn my chop cup routine up to 11 if that's possible <laughs> by including one of the final loads with that too so you guys will see my take on that in the in the project yeah and when you told me you're like oh i, I do it right out of the pocket i was like show me now like uh cool i <laughs> see that like i've got some things i'm playing with with um back end loads magnetic loads that you would pull off the back but yeah i mean i, I love the way again when you work in a magic shop it it's a different 
type of lesson where you just sort of understand what you can get away with in your environment, right? So every environment is different and really it's the end effect we're going for, right? So people will say, well, magic online is cheating because of the camera. It, no, it isn't, right? It's the end effect in the environment that you're put in, whether that's a magic shop or a strolling situation or the magic castle where everything is perfect and you can plan out where it goes. And the whole intention of getting workers that I respect who are really get out there working, uh, getting these in their hands is for reasons like this, you know, two days later, you calling me up and going, yeah, I load from the pocket. Awesome. That probably saves me four <laughs> years of trying to figure something out, you know, so having this wide, oh, having this wide range of artists on there and all their different takes, you know, I think our, our goal was to approach the project and have it be a definitive cups and balls for anybody that would ever want to perform. And I'm not ignorant to the fact that I have a unique style and you could either like it, hate it, or be okay with it. But that's across the board, right? There's people that hate David Williamson's style. They're all lunatics and out of their mind that they don't like it, but there are. That's my point is that no matter who you are or what your style is, it's not going to fit everybody. And the minute you try and please everybody, you're setting yourself up for setting yourself up for failure. So having Michael's take on it as a real in the trenches worker every single day, then having a friend of mine who does weekend shows at a beautiful parlor setting, having another for Tom Wright in the UK. Well, the UK is a totally different performing environment. While he's a monster worker, it's just a different performing environment. Like in the States, a lot of times we don't get long tables where you got to perform at the end of a table, but that's super common in the UK. So, you know, the idea of getting everyone involved and, uh, you, you know, the fact you allowed us to sort of take this routine and share it with the customers is, um, is awesome. And it's what I think will separate this project from almost every other cups and balls project out there. Cause you can either get the cups and then you do your own teaching or find it, or you can get the Amar or the, the Daryl or one of the million other teachings out there, the Vernon. But we wanted to have a set where it's like a modern take on the classic with all these ideas. And you know, yours, I, I love it. Like I said, um, I saw you do it to me. I was like, that's it. Let's get him a set right now. And then I saw the video of you performing. <laughs> and it's just, you know, when you see a lay audience, it's a different feel, right? It's It's, we get it. We know that the damn thing's stuck there by a magnet. We know all that. So we're going for cleverness, right? <laughs> oh, clever handling. But a lay audience, it hits their hand. And to them, you got to take a minute and go, they genuinely are convicted that there's nothing in this cup. And all of a sudden, somehow, magically, there's a bean in their hand. Man, it doesn't get much better than that. So um, I, I, again, appreciate. So when you're out strolling and you're doing this, um, were you before the coffee cups and beans is the in your strolling set, not not so much at the magic shop, but in something that's a little less controlled? Uh, would you still do a, a your chop cup routine and you just have your cup with you and a ball and do sort of a classic variation of it? Yeah, so there's a couple ways that I do it. Um, a, a good friend of mine, Ari Phillips, actually, um, he showed me his handcrafted leather cups. He was also a black pool. Maybe you they're saw beautiful. Stand. I, I saw. Them. I, had, beautiful. I had to get. One, I had to get one of those. They were, they were so cool. And he does it with dice. And I thought that that was so interesting. You know, like I never thought to do a chop cup routine with dice. And the cup looks almost like a cup that you'd put dice in and shake it. And like a Yahtzee, like a, a leather Yahtzee cup almost. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it felt it felt very organic. And then there was the, the bonus bit too, because he's doing this is a chop cup with dice, right? Um, the dice is is loaded in such a way that you can shake the cup with the dice inside of it and then uh you can have them look inside the cup and memorize the number and then as you're going along through the routine you can actually read their mind and tell them what number they're thinking of so it's like a no. bonus little thing too um so that's kind of the one that i do right now and the cup is small enough that it fits in my pocket so i can walk around with it and stuff like that um but yeah i love i love doing chop cup stuff it's 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 cool it's fun it's different it's not cards <laughs> and you know, exactly. and the spectators, they appreciate that sometimes. So anything that's not cards always gets a check mark for the, yeah. <laughs> sure. um, well, Hey man, again, I, I don't want to keep you too long. I just wanted to kind of publicly say thank you. Um, you know, get your insight and, and your take on it. And, uh, you know, again, thank you for, for donating this routine to the community. I know there's going to be people out there that use it and enjoy it. And, uh, it's an honor to have you on the project, man. I really appreciate that. 
It's an honor working with you, man. You and Felix have both been great. So thank you guys for having me on. Thank you for gifting me a set of these. I'm definitely going to put together a beautiful uh, routine with the full cup set and everything for my formal close-up. Uh, I'm going to produce the beans and everything, man. I'm going to make you proud. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> you already have, my brother. Again, thank you so much. And to everybody watching, thank you for taking a minute. If you haven't gotten yours yet, you can go over to volpinecreations.com, pick up the pre-order, and get over $100 worth of free magic from getting it us from from getting it from us directly. I'm so excited, I can't even talk properly. So I hope you are as well. <laughs> Thanks again, we'll see you on the next one. Definitely.